Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be going over how to create it so we have an idle camera in our game. So in some games you might have it so when the character and the player stops moving, after a certain amount of time the camera will start spinning around the player as you see here, and then when they start moving the camera or start moving themselves, it then stops rotating, and then when they're idle again after a while it will continue to rotate as you can see perfectly working here. So this is what we're going to be making today and it's very easily customizable so you can change the speed at which it rotates, you can change how quickly you have to wait or not wait for it to start spinning after you stop moving and so many other things as well. This is a great nice piece of code and it gives quite a nice effect as well as again you can see it just slowly moves around just so it looks a little bit better when you're idle. So this is what we're going to be making today so without further ado let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our character blueprint, which for me is in content, third person BP, blueprints, third person character. For you this could be the third person, first person, or whatever you've named it. And once we're in here, we just want to find some empty space and then right click and add a custom event. And I'm just going to name this one camera spin. And so this is what's going to be handling spinning the camera around the player. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to hold down B and left click to get a branch, connecting that into the event there. And the condition we want to have as a boolean. So I'm going to hit the plus variable here, naming this one should spin question mark, compiling, leaving the default value as false, and connecting that into the condition there because we want to make this a loop. So it is going to be looping, turning the camera while we need it. And this here is just going to break the loop when we want to stop it. And so out of true, we want to actually move the camera. So to do that, we're going to be setting the control rotation because that just sets the rotation of the camera. So what we can do is right click and get player controller and then come out of this and set control rotation perfectly like so, connecting that into true of the branch. And then what I'm also going to do is right click new rotation and split structure pin, moving this back down because we only want to rotate it on the Z, not the X and Y because I just want to rotate it in a circle. But obviously you can do X and Y as well if you wanted, just mess about with it to get it perfect for you. And then for the X and Y, I'm not going to leave it at zero. I'm going to keep it as what the camera currently is. So to get it as what it currently is, I'm going to again right click and get player controller. And out of this, instead of setting the control rotation, I'm just going to get control rotation. Then I'm going to right click this and split the structure pin, connecting the X and Y into the set control rotation there. So it's just setting it to what it is already so it won't change. And that will work perfectly. Now to figure out the Z, so to actually increase it, that's also very simple. What we can do is again, get the player controller and get the control rotation. So I'm just going to copy and paste that up there, right click and recombine the structure pin. And then what I'm going to do is out of this, I'm going to get an R interp2, which smoothly transitions from one rotation to another. And that will go into the current. The target, what I'm going to do is out of get control rotation, I'm going to break rotator and then come out of the X and make rotator again, connecting that return value into the target there. And the reason I'm breaking it is because I want to increase the Z value here, because again, that's what we want to rotate it on. So X will go in X, Y will go in Y, and the Z will go into a float plus a float, going back into the Z there, and I'm gonna leave it as one. You can increase this to be whatever you like, so you can have it as less or more, but I'm gonna leave it as one, that way it's nice and smooth. Obviously increasing it means it will rotate quicker, however I have a better way of making it rotate quicker if you want. Leaving it as one just keeps it looking nice and smooth. And so then on the R int up 2, the delta time is going to be get world delta seconds. And the int up speed is how we're now going to control how fast we want it to rotate. So I'm going to put it as 5 as that's a good value for me. And that's the value which I had in the overview you saw at the start of the video. Increasing this value makes it rotate faster decreasing makes it rotate slower. So change the interp speed here to change the speed at which it is rotating by making it perfect for you. And then I'm going to right click the return value on the R interp2 with a split structure bin with the Z going to the set control rotation there working perfectly like so and now what this is going to do is actually rotate the camera how we want. However like I say we need this to be a loop so if I hold down D and left click to get a delay I can connect that into the set control rotation with a duration at 0.001, so it's nice and quick and smooth. And the completed, we're going to a call function, camera spin, like so. And we compile, save, and now we have that loop 
set up working perfectly. What we also need to do now is set it up so that we actually fire this off and we can cancel it so it's only working when we want it to. That's very, very simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Edit, Project Settings, go down to Input, and we're gonna create some action mappings. So I'm gonna hit the plus action mapping here, and I'm gonna name this one Movement, and I'm gonna set these to be my movement keys. These are the keys that I want to use to cancel the rotation. So for me, that's gonna be W, A, S, and D, but this could be W, A, S, D, space, control, anything on those lines. Again, for me, it's just W, A, S, and D. So these are the keys that the player will press to cancel the rotation of the camera. So again, set this up and customize it to be perfectly what you want. And I'm gonna hit another action mapping, naming this one camera movement. And this one is gonna be mouse X and mouse Y. And the reason I've got these separate is because, let me explain it a bit better. The movement, this is gonna cancel it, but also trigger it. So after we've pressed one of these, it can then decide if it wants to rotate the camera or not. This camera movement isn't gonna decide that, this is instead gonna just cancel it. So this is to cancel and decide, this is just to cancel. So that's why I've got them separately like so. And then once you've got those set up to how you want, we can close it, back in our player blueprint, we can right click and search for what we just made. So I'm gonna get the movement one first, and it will be movement under action events there like so. And out of this, I wanna set another Boolean to true or false. So I'm gonna hit a plus variable here, naming this one is moving question mark. And out of pressed, I'm gonna set it to be true. And out of released, I'm gonna set it to be false. Because obviously we are moving if this is pressed and we aren't moving if we've released it. And then out of these, I'm going to get a re-triggerable delay, connecting that into both of them. And this here is the duration of how long you want to have stopped moving before the camera starts rotating. So I'm gonna set it to three, but you can set this to one, three, five, anything you want. Again, this is just how long it will take for the camera to start rotating after you stop moving. So I've got it as three. Then I'm gonna hold down B and left click to get a branch, connecting that to the completed with a condition of is moving. So the reason we've done this is because this delay will fire off when we start or stop moving. And because it's re-triggerable, it means if we start, then stop, then start, it will go back to three. However, if you just hold down W to keep moving forwards, this will fire off and then complete. So we wanna see if we're still moving, don't do that. And then when we stop moving, it will fire off again and obviously continue into what we want. So true of this branch, we're not gonna do anything because we don't wanna fire off if we're moving. So we're gonna come out false. And if it's false, we're gonna set should spin to true. So we can start this loop up here. And then we're also going to call function camera spin there. So again, we're now starting the loop perfectly. So in compile, save, and that is how we're gonna start the loop. Now let's also set it up so we end the loop. So underneath this, I'm gonna right click and now get the camera movement action event we made earlier. With the pressed going into a branch, so hold down B and left click, with the condition of should spin. Because if we move our camera and the camera is spinning, we're gonna cancel it. But if we move the camera and the camera isn't spinning, we don't need to do anything. So out of true, we can just set should spin to be false, because like I say again, that will then just end this loop here because it will come out of false and do nothing. I'm also gonna connect a movement into there. So I'm just gonna copy and paste that action event with pressed going into the branch. So both moving and the camera will cancel the camera spin like so. So I'm gonna compile and save, and this will work perfectly. However, there's another adjustment I'm gonna make. So in the moment, what needs to happen is we need to move initially first for the camera to then actually decide to spin when we're idle. And when we cancel it, we then have to again, move again to reset it. So I'm gonna change this. So what I'm gonna do is up here where we have the retriggerable delay starting the camera spin. I'm going to right click and add a custom event, naming this one check spin, connecting that into the delay there. Because again, this delay is what decides whether or not to fire it off because it will come out completed. And then if we're not moving, it will fire off the spin. So that will work perfectly. And then very simply what I can do is after we set should spin to false, I'm also going to call function check spin. So we're gonna set it to false and then check again to see if we wanna fire it off. Because the player might have just nudged their mouse. So they'll nudge it, cancel it, wait three seconds and decide whether or not we want to restart it again. And then I also wanna do this when we start the game. So I'm gonna get event begin play by holding down P and left click to get it. 
and then out of this I'm just going to also call function check spin like so to decide whether or not we want to actually spin the camera and we can compile save hit play to test this as this should now be working perfectly for us so I can move around and nothing will happen to the camera it's not going to move and if I stop moving we wait three seconds the camera should now start spinning perfectly like so only moving it on the Z rotation not changing the X and Y and if I then move forward it stopped if I wait three seconds again it should continue rotating and if I move the camera it stopped wait three seconds it will continue rotating perfectly like so so this works perfectly so I think that'll be it for this video so we've done everything we want to do we've set it up so we have a camera spinning around the player when the player is idle and when they move the camera or move themselves it cancels it waits another three seconds or however long you want and it will restart rotating the camera around the player just to make it look a little bit nicer while the player is idle so thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one